In this video, I want to just walk through the basic components of writing your first uh, article, your first journalistic article, and the components of what's going to be in the article, and some tips on how to lay it out and things like that, and how to format it. So uh, we're just going to jump right into your first article here. Starting with, what are the parts of a news article? What are the different pieces, the different parts? Let's just identify those real quick. We're just going to use this story here uh, from the New York Times as, a, as an example to identify the different parts of a news article. First, we start with the headline or the title. You can see there I've highlighted it uh, for this article. Um, so the headline is something that not only identifies what the article is going to be about, but also kind of tries to pull us in in some way. And, and it's just really just a, the briefest possible summation uh, and also you know, something to gain the interest of the reader and, and pull us in, make us want to read that article. So you have the headline or the title. Then underneath that, we're going to tell who wrote the article. And you can see how this is really small in this graphic, so let's just blow it up a little bit. But the byline there, you can see that uh, identifies who was involved in writing this article, the primary author or authors of this article, and identifies those people. Then um, the next thing you're probably going to see is the lead, sometimes spelled L-E-D-E, and we'll get into that in a second here. But uh, the lead, which is basically the first sentence or sometimes two sentences of an article that really provides a summation and uh, and and uh, just the basics and, and if you were to only read this one or two sentences that you would still have a sense of what the article is about and still the basic information you would have the whole picture of course but that's what the lead is for the lead is there to not only give us that brief summation at the beginning but again continue to pull us in it needs to be written in a way that is uh, that, that draws the reader in and makes us want to go even further then okay so we have the byline and the lead then following that, you have the story. After the lead, you have obviously more information coming, which is the story. And I've highlighted that there in the place in the article. And if we zoom in a little more again, you can see that there's some detail here uh, about what that person is writing about and just provides more information beyond the, the basics in the lead, expands upon those things and really gives us that depth of information to a certain extent. Within the story, you're also going to have sources of course there's not a lot in this article because it's you know it's, pretty, it's a very pub public statement so there wasn't a lot of need to clarify things with other sources and things it was it's all just kind of laid out there for this article but you, know, you have the source there from the, the text uh, that came out about the announcement and things so uh, so we do have sources that are going to be you know identified throughout the article if you have sources that you're using and we, they would be identified within the text of the article then and, and clearly have those uh, comments and those ideas attributed to that that source and that person finally you're going to have an ending here now this article extends onto a different page so we don't have the ending to show you really but uh, but you're going to have an ending somehow to this article and that ending could be you know just wrapping it up and summing again it could be here's how to find out more it just depends on what you're working on what you're doing but somehow you need to wrap that article up and then bring it to some sort of conclusion then so there you have the parts of a news article just a basic outline of, of what are the what are the different parts of a news article? Now that we have that, we can start thinking about how do we format news stories as journalists, as a writer? What's the format that we might use? And, and there are, uh, I'll say, a variety of uh, formats that people use, but, and these are just some of the, the more general ones, the standard kind of, uh, you know, old standards for, for journalists that have used for years here. So, uh, uh, Again, almost every story that you read is going to start with a lead, which again, sometimes is spelled L-E-D-E, -E, but it's still pronounced lead. And that was intentional. Back in the mid-20th century, lead was a part of the creation of newspapers and things like that. So uh, when publishers were writing instructions, they were worried that lead may be confused with lead and somehow get that confused. So they just changed the spelling of it to an old English spelling of the word lead. But it's the same thing we were talking about before. It's that first sentence or two in the news story that, that really summarizes and provides that just briefest of, of summations of that uh, that article and tells the, the reader exactly what's coming. Um, so again, that one or two sentences right at the very beginning, that's going to be a part of just about every news story, just about any kind of journalistic story that you would write is going to have a lead and, and it's going to be involved at the beginning there. Then, classically, you would look at the five W's and the H. Who, what, when, where... Uh, why and how so we get those five w's who what when where and why and then the one h of how right but typically as we're writing a story we need to identify those things you're probably going to identify several of them in the lead not always all of them but several of them in the lead to ident you know i get to just really quickly identify what's happening here and what we're going to expand on the, in the rest of the story 
And then throughout the rest of the story, though, you're really gonna it's gonna revolve around these things in different ways, right? We're gonna identify those in the very beginning, and then continue to expand upon those things throughout the story. So these are gonna be important throughout the uh, the progression of the story. Now, one uh, common format for news stories in particular to use um, is what's called the inverted pyramid in journalism. And you can see here the inverted pyramid. It starts with the lead. That's the that's the very first thing, the very top. And, uh, and it's really short, again, one to two sentences, answering those questions, you know, not necessarily all of them, but certainly any of them that are particularly relevant to that story, you're going to answer those questions. The who, what, when, where, why, and how of the situation. And it, it needs to include, as it says, there's some sort of hook, probably to, to kind of keep the audience interested, keep the reader interested, and keep them uh, continuing on in the article. So you have to lead, that's at the very top. Then once you have the lead, you get down to the body. Again, this is where we're expanding things. We're, we're, we're providing more description. We're providing more information. We're, 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 you know, providing more explanation for those things that are, that have been identified in the lead. Uh, as it points out, may, may involve some evidence and some background. Also may involve some, a picture or video, depending on what kind of medium you're using. You could certainly include those things in the body. But, but then again, this is just where we expand all of that information from the lead. Then you have the tail. At the bottom of the inverted pyramid, you have the, the tail, which is kind of everything else. You know, and, and we're, we're prioritizing here. Really. We're prioritizing for both the reader and the editors and everybody else involved who are prioritizing. The lead is the information that absolutely, crucially must be in there. The body has the information that really should because it, it, it explains and supports the lead. The tail is all the extra stuff that we can have that would be great to have in there would add something to the the article um, but if it were to get cut wouldn't affect the ability of the reader to really understand the article uh, so uh, or whatever the, the reading or they're the listening to wouldn't affect their ability to to understand that and have the full picture still but but the tale may include some really cool extras and just some things like that but so the inverted pyramid is is, is kind of great in terms of uh, in terms of structuring their article and putting the most important stuff up front and at the top and it allows the reader to kind of get a really clear picture within just a few sentences and then if they want to continue reading they can get that extra they can it also makes it good for editors editors can and know then that they can start kind of at the bottom at the, at the end of the article and if they need to cut for space or whatever they can start removing things out of the tail and not have to worry about you know necessarily um, considering the whole article as sacred and, and figuring out where to, to cut from the, it makes a, an editor's job a little easier uh, the, on the downside, though, there are pros and cons here. Though. On the downside, <clears throat> it can be a little boring. It can be a little formulaic. It can get a little old, in a sense. It doesn't allow a lot of room for creativity if, uh, if a writer's got some sort of creative bent. And uh, so, and depending on the type of article that you're writing, it may work better. You know, it works great for breaking news and really important news stories like that. But if you're writing a feature article, it may not be quite as appropriate or, you know, just depending on what you're writing. Really. So there are pros and cons of the inverted pyramid. It's, it's certainly a tried and true format for news stories and, and journalistic writing in general, but it's not necessarily, uh, you know, the end all be all. It's not you know, an automatic, oh, you must use this. Uh, so you need to be aware of the inverted pyramid and know when it's appropriate to use it and how to use it and things like that, but also be aware that it may not be the best choice for everything. So we have the inverted pyramid, though, as a, as a type of formatting. And then another thing we need to consider in formatting our news stories is the SVO uh, format, SVO format, right? Standing for subject, verb, object. And that's really a sentence structure that we want to use in uh, journalistic writing and news stories in particular. But journalistic writing uh, in general, you use the subject, verb, object format to structure sentences. So, for example, I'll give you an example. Uh, look at these two sentences. Dave saved the drowning boy, and then the other says, the drowning boy was saved by Dave. Now, they may look very similar, and they may, you know, seem like they communicate the same things, but there are some key differences here uh, that we want to look at. So, first of all, the first sentence follows the SVO format, and it is active. It is active. It, 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 it's not a passive uh, sentence. It, it's, it's an active sentence, which really is more, <clears throat> excuse me, intriguing for the audience and, and, uh, and, uh, a more exciting read for them when when we put things in an active tense as opposed to a passive tense there. So the first one is active. Secondly, the first one is shorter. 
uh, and I know if you're used to writing, you know, English papers and things like that, you may be used to thinking, how can I expand this? How can I use 10 words instead of one here? But in journalistic writing, you kind of want to go the opposite way. If you can say it in fewer words, then we're generally going to do so. Right, so that's the first sentence is, is shorter, only by a couple of words, but still a couple of words over the course of an article, a couple of words over every sentence in an article saves a lot of space, saves a lot of reading because people aren't going to spend all day probably reading your article. So we need to be able to help them get through that as quickly as possible and still get them the, the, the most important information, on it, right? So the first sentence is shorter and that's good. So it's active, it's shorter, and it also creates a sense of visualization for the reader. The reader can, can kind of picture this, you know, Dave saving the drowning boy, as opposed to by the time, you know, they get to Dave's name at the end of that sentence, that second sentence, they've really already forgotten what's happened in the beginning, right? That, that, that there's a drowning boy there, okay, but there's no connection really for that person between the two things, okay, between the subject and the object. Um, it's the way the mind works. But the first sentence, it's not only active and it's shorter, but it, it helps encourage that visualization in the reader and really, you know, brings that, those words to life in their mind. And that's true whether they're reading it, whether they're hearing it in a, in a digital format or podcast or, or video format or whatever. We want to consider the SVO format in sentence structure for writing because of those things, because it's active, it's shorter, and it, and it encourages visualization. Okay, a few other things to keep in mind, key considerations here for writing your first article. Uh, first, uh, people first. People come first, not only in the sense of people are more interesting to read about generally in these articles, but also people are the ones who are going to be reading this article. So keep in mind how this affects people, um, how does it connect with people, how is it going to read to people that are in the audience, you know, so, or, or you know, how's, how are people going to hear it and how is it going to hit them in that way. So consider the audience and consider people throughout the entire process of creating this article. Secondly, what's your angle? That's another key consideration. What, what makes your particular perspective on this different from anybody else's, especially if it's something that's being widely reported. If you don't have a really unique story, if you're reporting on something and, and writing about something that a lot of other people are writing about, what sets yours apart? What makes yours different? What makes, uh, makes it so that people need to read yours as opposed to just reading it somewhere else? What's your angle on this? Uh, Third, you want to use what we call kiss writing, and what we're, we're calling kiss is uh, keep it uh, sweet and short. Right? We already talked about the, the value of short sentences and things, but in terms of helping people understand and follow your article, just keep it short and sweet. Okay. Maybe that's a better term. Keep it short and sweet, right? For our writing, keep the sentences shorter. Keep the you know keep economy in mind. Now that doesn't mean exclude or treat people like they're stupid or whatever, but but the quicker we can get them through the article, the more chance we have, the better chance we have of getting them through that entire article. Okay. And then finally, edit, edit, and edit again. Editing is so important in journalism in general before you ever send it to anybody else. It's important that you read this article and you read it, and, and then you set it aside and you come back to it and you read it again and you look for not only errors in grammar and punctuation, and, and but also, is this phrase the best way that I can possibly phrase it? Is there some things that I can take out, or the things that I can kind of shorten this and, and help the audience uh, read it a little better? Is, is there something I can do to enhance the readability, or the, you know, the listen ability, so to speak, of, of what we're doing, or the watchability of what I'm producing here? Is there something I can do? But we need to go back and and review this several, several times before you, know, you just shoot your first draft off to the editor or off to somebody to print. You go through it time and time again with a fine tooth comb. And you also go through it from a broader perspective. It's not all about, you know, sometimes one time you go through it and you look for, okay, is the punctuation all correct? Have I spelled everything correctly and so forth? Then set it aside and come back and, and read the article as a whole and say, okay, does it flow well? Does it, does it work properly? Does it go where I want it to go? But we need to edit and edit and edit again until we've got it just right. Because you get one chance usually at these articles, so make sure that you're giving it your best effort the first time through. And that's true for every article, not just your first one. If you have questions about how to write your first article, or about the content that we've discussed here, or anything else related to uh, an introduction to digital journalism, feel free to email me. I'm always happy to hear from people in email, and, and we'll respond as quickly as I possibly can. Okay? In the meantime, get out there and write some article. Get your first one published. Get it out on the internet. Get your first uh, podcast up, whatever you're doing. But get out there and start creating.